Good morning, 47. Your target is Mark Faber, also known as the Undying. A disgraced former MI5 operative currently working as a freelance assassin, Faber has been confirmed killed by ICA agents more than a dozen times. On every occasion, he has managed to come back from the dead. We have confirmation that Faber has a meeting in the Miami Bayside Center to review details on a new target. An informant at the site has provided us with reliable intel on Faber's expected movement around the center. This information has revealed several viable approaches. As you know, our inside man is meeting with the target. Acquire the right disguise, and he'll get you inside the heart of the building. Up close and personal is risky, but favors the clean kill. Alternatively, smuggle in a sniper rifle via briefcase. The race tower is a perfect vantage point, but access is restricted. Race security is high. Get through the locked door and time your shot perfectly. Or infiltrate through the staff entrance at the back of the building. Access the second floor using the elevator shaft. Move unseen inside the weapons demo room and infiltrate as you see fit. Act once an opportunity presents itself or rig the room to your advantage and leave unseen. Be mindful, however. The repercussions of being exposed here would be severe. I'm confident even more opportunities will reveal themselves once you arrive on site. 47. To be entirely honest, this one's a bit of an embarrassment. Please, make sure he doesn't come back again. Good luck. Good afternoon, 47. Your target is already inside the Miami Bayside Center. Faber has a full day of meetings planned, and we do not want to risk losing him. Take your time with this one. Dave Reddy, our informant, is waiting for you in the reception area. If you like, he can lead you to a meeting where Faber will be in attendance. What you do from then on is up to you. Be mindful, you must be Dave you won't wait around for long. Yes. So, we finally meet. You don't quite look like I expected. I'm Mark Faber. I have one of those forgettable faces. Uh, that's not Dave Reddy, sir. This is just the guy who works here. Right. I just work here. Mr. Reddy should be here shortly. It's Kronstadt Cars. I'm very cool, sir. Ah, there you are. I expected something different. I'm Mark Faber. Mr. Faber! What an absolute pleasure to meet you. I'm Dave see anything weird? Book, but I'm sure you've already heard about me. Can't say that I have. Oh, uh, I see. Before we begin, I just wanted to tell you that I've read up on your file. Oh, man, very impressive. It's all about enjoying what you do. Couldn't agree more, my friend. I've prepped an extensive briefing to help us sync up on the subject that needs to be, uh, <laughs> consulted with. I think it'll provide you with a full 360. Good. Let's proceed. Hey, not a problem, Mark. Not a problem at all. All right, well, let's grab a seat and get this show on the road. Okay, so the consultation is with a man called Pavel Sukov. A relative of your boss's former partner. 10-4. For the last six months, Zukov has been fishing out malicious rumors about my good friend Bob Knox. Did some digging, and it turns out he's publishing a book about the secret beginning of Kronstadt Industries. <laughs> Completely ridiculous effort. But the rumors are putting a hard stop on the growth of our stock. He's been putting out some very quotable things in the media lately. So, Knox is looking to protect the bottom line. This Zukov fella, he's enjoying the limelight. There was a press conference a week ago, yeah? Huh. You've really done your homework. You're right. He's showering in media attention. Is that going to be a problem? On the contrary. I prefer public consultations. Nowhere better to hide than in the middle of a spectacle. Well, then this is your bluebird, my friend. I think I'll just head over to that new fella and have a look at the equipment. I'll come back. You know what? 
Let's try a small exercise. You. Suppose you were sent to kill me. We're in this meeting together. You're sitting there in the chair, waiting for your moment. How would you kill me? What's the plan? You've been drinking quite a lot of coffee. Yes. Fast-acting poison. Emetic. About five seconds from ingestion to reaction. Follow you to the bathroom. Drown you. Terrible accident. Gruesome. But I've survived worse than that. What else? Cause a small distraction. Lure you out onto the balcony and throw you over the railing to your death below. You look strong enough. But there are bushes down there. They break the fall. I'd walk away without a single broken bone. Final bid? Knife on the table over there. Quick throw. Knife through the head. You'd be dead before you hit the floor. <laughs> That's more like it. But very risky. You'd have a hard time escaping the room. But I would love to see you try that. I'll just head over to check on what that you guy's working on. You carry on. Knife me. I've got the new act lined up. You've reviewed the plans. It's very public because the target is public. I want a big audience for this one. With higher extras as props telling them it's for a TV show. Add cameras for effect. Getting their assassin in place is all down to social engineering, and that's my headache, not yours. Just make sure the replacement cadaver is where I indicated, all right? Once Sukov's gone up in smoke, I'll reveal myself to the would-be assassin, get him in the elevator, and he'll take his shot once upstairs. And that's your cue. Good. I've got Excuse a ton me, of things sir. to prepare Seems at like my end today. You must be Mark Faber. I wish I could say I knew all about you, but Dave's been uncharacteristically secretive. You work in weapons development, too? More on the practical application side of things, if you understand. Oh, uh, uh, of course. V v very nice. Well, um, I looked at the diagram. Hey, back off a bit, would you? Oh, uh, uh, of course. V v very nice. Well, um, I looked at the diagrams you sent. I haven't had that much time to work on the prototypes, but I, I do have something early to show you. Lovely. Let's have a look. Oh, the designs were interesting. Oh, did, did you do them yourself, I wonder? They were drawn up to my specifications, yes. Ah, so that explains the untraditional nature of the work. I like things to be custom. You could say that spectacle is part of my signature. Very interesting, Mr. Faber. Right, let's have a look at this. I need it to be an exact replica of Sukov's favorite fountain pen. And it has to... Explosive element. What the hell is this? What am I supposed to do with this thing? Stab the man? We had some difficulty accommodating the the, the exact design requirements. <laughs> no, the, the pen's actually woven from the, the finest boron nitrate nanotubing, with a tensile strength surpassing 33,000 megapascals. I'm sure that will impress your engineering friends, but that hardly makes it explosive. I specifically requested an explosive pen capable of vaporizing the upper part of a man's torso. Well, uh, coming by a volatile compound that would be able to achieve that is uh, extremely hard. A distilled sample of Mr. Knox's nitro booster didn't even come close. Frankly, uh, it, it seems a, a little excessive, Mr. Faber. Of course, that's the whole point. There isn't much spectacle in waiting for the man to accidentally stab himself in the eye with your ridiculous boron nitrate pen on live television, is there? I... Uh, oh, I suppose not. Disappointing. Well, done is done. I suppose I'll have to try to figure out how to use this thing now. So, this is Robert Knox's new brainchild. Chilling. Can't really. 
they see it replacing humans for a long time, but I will say, I admire his showmanship. But you, my friend, lack what all machines lack. Spontaneity. The ability to think freely on your feet. And, perhaps more important than anything, the ability to feel fear, whether we like it or not. The fear of death is what drives us, makes us human. Once we lose that, well, we're nothing more than empty shells drifting through life, waiting to finally be discarded. Palace is top of the line, Mr. Faber. The most advanced robotic system in the world. The AI is world class, too. Yeah, Mr. Knox has designed this to make us all jobless in 20 years. Yeah, I saw his talk on artificial intelligence last year. I'm more of a flesh and blood kind of guy than he is, I think. But we could all become indestructible. I certainly hope not. We'd all be up to the job then. Hmm, the bomb doesn't actually have to be that powerful. But it is extremely important the explosive element is flashy enough. It's not misdirection if people aren't looking at it. This isn't exactly a discreet container, but I suppose if we add balloons to the event, spray paint this to look like a helium canister, I think we could make this work. The most ingenious thing about the active ingredient in Mr. Knox's octane booster is the versatility. We can create multiple compounds from this, effectively shaping its use based on what we add to it. Oh, so? Well, for instance, if you were to require a, a flashier explosion, the Nox burns quite quickly and doesn't produce long-lasting flames. But if you were to add a, an adhesive or, or, or even a magnesium solution to the compound, things would change dramatically. After all, it was originally designed to produce colored flames and smoke for drag racing events. Hmm. That is very useful indeed. I have to say, Mr. Yu, I like what I'm seeing here. Oh, thank you, Mr. Faber. I'll head back to the briefing room for a while. I'll see you later. It's me. I just sent you the location for the next gig. I need you to build me a pop-up bookstore there. You'll be able to hold about 50 people at a time. There'll be pyrotechnics going off downstairs, so we need to make sure the place doesn't burn down before we're ready for it. There's also an elevator in the back, which I need to be able to control via remote. No. No, the main event takes place on the top floor. Morgan's assured me we can lure anyone we need up there quite easily. We'll detonate the entire floor using a new type of explosive I'm hoping to secure today. No, the agent should live. We need the witness. We'll detonate once he fires off the first shot. Lucky hit on a nearby gas canister. Far fetched, sure. They held the explosive fire extinguisher a few years ago. I'm sure it'll work. Right. I need to finish with an intel brief here. Okay, let's get back into it. Pavel Sukov and Knox go way back. Sukov's older brother actually started Kronstadt with Knox was killed in a tragic accident just days before the company went on to the stock exchange. Pavel seems to think Mr. Knox had something to do with that, so he's been carrying a grudge for years. We've been giving him the old corporate runaround for about a decade, until I got wind of this new book. I read an early draft, and let me tell you, it's as explosive as some of your finest work, Mr. Faber. We have to shut this guy down, and you're just the man to do it. Very well, it seems like we've got matching intelligence on most of this so far. I honestly expected some deeper insight into Sukov. Something about his preferences, his character, habits. Let's see if we can find some of those, shall we? It's me. Any news on the special guest yet? Davenport and Swan. I'm not much for reruns, Alice. The bow is amusing, I suppose, but the poisoning isn't something I'd like to try again. Besides, they wouldn't send the same people twice. 
Well, I sent the ICA an invite. Seeing as most of their top-tier agents have failed, they're bound to send him. If he even That's exists, fine. you know? I'm beginning to wonder. Sure, we've all heard the stories. But that's all they've ever been. I'm sorry, sir. I hope I can't he's real. And I hope he shows. I should very much like to meet him. Then we've had a good run. If I go by anyone's hand, it's that. Good. Good, I'll see you later, Alice. Come a little closer. I'm back. Where did we leave off? So, we looked into renting the entire building. Short answer is, it can be done, but we'd need to scrap a couple of shell corps together in the process. Can't have anything linking back to Knox or I'll be out of a job. And I know you don't want that. So that makes it slightly more complicated, as there are, you know, a lot of moving parts included in this, but it's totally achievable. I'm on the Our case, fight down hard on this huh? to get what you need. All right? All right! Very well, it seems like we've got matching intelligence on most of this so far. I honestly expected some deeper insight into Sukov, something about his preferences, his character, habits. Let's see if we can find some of those, shall we? I think I'll just head over to that you fella and have a look at the equipment. I'll come back. Uh, sure thing, sport. I'll be here, I guess. <sighs> Maybe I should give Knox a discount if he lets me kill Gunslinger Dave in there. When you get time, can you explain the string theory to me? Uh, thanks. Something that made the victim experience extreme pain or undergo violent seizures, perhaps. It would need to look good on camera. Maybe if we if we somehow create a hard baked C4 pen, yeah, it would need some reinforcements to hold up. And, and well, the explosion still wouldn't be as devastating as desired. But as a first step, perhaps, yeah, I'll drop some plants and, and pass them on. So, how would one fit a flamethrower on you? Maybe a small one. Jet of fire from the mouth. A few more iterations of design, and you and I might be best friends, Mr. Robot. Mr. Knox is betting the future of his company on Palace here. I've only worked on the project for six months, but the concepts for weaponization are extremely promising. A small army of these would be able to devastate any opposition in days, particularly in urban warfare. somehow added a solidifying agent to this retarder to keep it from drying out if painted on a wall. We could set the entire room ablaze in green or purple fire. That would make the headlines. We did some experiments with foaming compounds, actually, to, to try to see if, if we could somehow use the active elements in the octane booster for things other than fuel. It turns out it's very promising, but further work is needed. Okay, I think I've seen enough for now. Need to think for a while. I'll be back later. Okay, let's get back into it. All right, so we know Zukov's planning on revealing his rag of lies to the world in New York next week. I paid off a call girl he frequents, and she let it slip where the bad boy's going to perform his evil deed. <laughs> that guy can't keep a strap online, but I guess that's our luck. Anyway, the downside is that he's going to have a lot of media there. Fascinating, Mr. Reddy. I should like to go over all the files myself at some point. Make sure I don't miss any of these gold nuggets of information. I think I need to stretch my legs for a few. Keep at it. Okay, well, you, you do that. There's still lots to talk about, though. Stabbing weapon. Stupid. How am I supposed to create a memorable moment if I can't even get someone this full of exploding pen? Maybe if it's just a small explosion, a precursor, something that would set off a bigger thing, would require an inside man. Hmm.
practical value is zero compared to the development costs. How would something like... Can't say I'm a big fan of the prospect of an android future. I may only be flesh and blood, but I've done all right for myself so far. It makes you think, doesn't it? I wonder what hooking up a truckload of this stuff to a sprinkler system might do. Maybe a neighboring building? A small incendiary device and a timer. Let it burn for a few minutes and then activate the sprinklers. I'm sure we can work out something to match your specs. I fully expect this product to win Mr. Knox and the team a Nobel Prize. Its versatility rivals that of dynamite. With some work, this could be the future of propulsion and explosives all in one. You're an interesting concept, my friend. Nobody would be able to resist the chance to get up close and personal with you. Which makes you very useful. Mr. Knox is betting the future of his company on Palace here. I've only worked on the project for six months, but the concepts for weaponization are extremely promising. A small army of these would be able to devastate any opposition in days. Particularly in urban warfare. Dave Reddy. What an absolute arse. Robert Knox certainly likes to keep a tight ship. Guards everywhere, eh? You're an important man, Mr. Faber. Wouldn't want anything to happen to you. Oh, no chance of that, my friend. Didn't you know? I'm unkillable. Mr. Faber. Yes. You're the weapons designer. Absolutely. Smashing. Let's have a look at what you've got. I know the designs I sent were unique. I figured you would appreciate the challenge. I'm always up for a challenge, Mr. Faber. So, where to begin? I'll leave that entirely up to you, Mr. Faber. I'm all about freedom of approach. Very well. Right, let's have a look at this. I need it to be an exact replica of Sukov's favorite fountain pen. And it has to... Huh? No explosive element. What the hell is this? What am I supposed to do with this thing? Stab the man? Looks to be made of boron nitrate nanotubing. It will be a very effective stabbing weapon, especially against the softer parts of a human body, like an eye. <laughs> You've got a very old-fashioned way about you. No self-respecting assassin would use something this silly. What's next, fiber wires? <laughs> hmm. Perhaps we should agree to disagree on that, Mr. Faber. So, this is Robert Knox's new brainchild. Chilling. Can't really see it replacing Hugh. You need a mint, twat. So, this is Robert Knox's new brainchild. Chilling. Can't really see it replacing humans for a long time, but I will say, I admire his showmanship. But you, my friend, lack what all machines lack. Spontaneity. The ability to think freely on your feet. And... Perhaps more important than anything, the ability to feel fear, whether we like it or not. The fear of death is what drives us, makes us human. Once we lose that, well, we're nothing more than empty shells drifting through life, waiting to finally be discarded. That's a bleak observation, coming from a man who's cheated death so many times. <laughs> well, it's not really death I've cheated, just humans. I wonder how I'd fare against something like this, something artificial, bred with a singular purpose, to kill. Would I be able to best it? Good question, Mr. Faber. Good question.
Hmm, the bomb doesn't actually have to be that powerful. But it is extremely important the explosive element is flashy enough. It's not misdirection if people aren't looking at it. This isn't exactly a discreet container. But I suppose if we add balloons to the event, spray paint this to look like a helium canister, I think we can make this work. You're not worried about losing control of the resulting explosion? Nox's octane booster isn't known for its reliability. Well, what's a little uncontrollable fire among friends? I'll be long gone by the time this thing is set off. Besides, I need a decent amount of fire to crisp up the remains, you know? You're planning on using a body double. Of course. It's worked so far, so why stop? Got quite a few of them in cold storage. Practical for my vanishing trick, if you know what I mean. Target eliminated. Hopefully, this will be the last time we have to deal with Mr. Faber. The money is being transferred now, 47. Time to find an exit. <laughs>